folks. Welcome back to another edition of Reviews from the Blind. Today I'm in my backyard uh, car blind and um, we're talking about the Canon 6D Mark II. Um, this, the way that these videos work is the first part of the video is going to be me doing a kind of a summary, actually first, my, my thoughts, my feelings on how, if I liked it, if I didn't like it. Um, and then it will transition into the more detailed review. So if you just want to get the kind of the highlights of the camera, just watch the first segment. If you want a long detailed review showing all the photographs that I made and so on, then watch the full review. Anyway, the Canon 6D Mark II. Um, it is a camera that I think Canon positioned probably, in my opinion, between, I don't even know if it's between anything. It's kind of like the full frame version of the ADD. Um, and I know some people will get mad when you say that, but the bottom line is if you look at the way it feels, it feels the size, it's a lot like the ADD. Um, it, fe it feels good. Um, if you look at it, it's got the, you know, the standard Canon grip here. Um, <clears throat> you know, the buttons are in pretty much where I would expect them to be on the back side. Uh, the one thing that uh, I really didn't like was the position of the Q button. I actually, initially, and then I actually got used to it being there and I find it to be a better place uh, where they put it. I actually put it right here. Um, it kind of where the thumb grip is right here. So if I had my fingers on it, it would be like right in there. And at first I was kind of like, eh, I don't know about that Canon, but in the end it's okay. I'm okay with it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, ergonomics is great as usual with Canon products. Um, one of the things I didn't like about the buttons, uh, and, and this is a problem with the original 6D as well as the 6D2. I do not like, I, and you're, you're gonna notice this in other videos, <clears throat> I do not like the, not having the joystick, okay? Having this little, I don't even know what you call it, disc thingy. Um, I, I just, I don't understand that. It's, it's very Rebel-esque, if you will. Um, I find that, <clears throat> You have to bear with me. I'm getting over a, a virus here. Um, I find that the controls are easy to use, easy to find. I like that they stuck with the traditional um, buttons here for the AE lock and then uh, the button for adjusting your uh, autofocus point. I thought that worked well. On the sides, <clears throat> we've got your standard HDMI out. Um, as well as the USB port for offloading pictures and so on. Um, one thing that I, I got real nervous about, I was doing some, some backyard hummingbird photography with it and I didn't realize where the, the port was for the, the, uh, cable release. And it's actually on the front, which is, uh, fair, somewhat uncommon, I think with Canon cameras. Um, I actually like it there. It just took me a while to find it. I was like, oh, no, I, I opened the flap on the side here, which you typically would do. And uh, it was nowhere to be found. Um, so I was a little nervous, as you can imagine. Why would there not be a port? But there is. There's a port, and it works great. I use that. Um, <clears throat> a typical, if you're used to the 7D, 5D series, very typical here with the, um, the on-off switch for going from stills to video. Um, very impressed with just the overall feel of the camera. Now, <clears throat> let's get down to nitty gritty. Let's talk about how did it shoot. I think overall, I was very impressed with how this camera operated. Uh, I didn't expect a whole lot. Um, it being kind of a middle position at the middle market, I didn't expect a whole lot from it. But I was very pleased, even from a, a fast action perspective. I took this to a soccer game, to my son's soccer game, and uh, used AI Servo on it. And 
it locked on very well. I want to say, I almost hate to say this. I'm going to say it with it with kind of the, the caveat that I haven't fully tested it. But it seemed to focus about as good as my 7D Mark II in that scenario. Uh, maybe even a little better at times. I have to, I have to be honest. Um, I, I am seriously considering this camera uh, as a backup to my 7D Mark II and for doing uh, sports. I mean, not sports, but, well, some sports. But um, I can see this camera fitting into the... the uh, the uh, uh, macro world, the uh, certainly, I mean, really any genre. I mean, it can handle any genre, but particularly you want to take advantage of the fact that this camera has 26 megapixels. Okay, that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you consider the fairly recent 5D3 was 22 megapixels, then this camera really does have a much higher resolution. Um, it has a 6.5 frames per second which is good that's actually it, you're approaching that realm of being able to shoot birds in flight pretty well because you're you're getting closer to that that eight frames per second kind of uh ideal frames per second that i think uh you need for entry level um wildlife work so let's let's uh let's listen to that real quick let's see what that sounds like Whoop, wrong one, guys. Hang on, hang on. Change my drive to high. So it's got a pretty good buffer there. You heard that. It started buffering a little bit, but still pretty impressive, I think, out of a mid-range camera like this. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, when I, when I think about some of the other concerns that I have or some of the other things that make this different from the 5D Mark IV, for example. We want to talk about the autofocus points. There's only 45 autofocus points in this camera, okay? When you compare that to my 7D Mark II, it's 65 cross-type points. It becomes a little more difficult to use this in a wildlife situation or in a lot of different situations because ideally we would like the entire sensor to be filled with autofocus points and why because um subjects aren't smack dab in the middle of your frame right you don't always want your subject right in the middle you might want them to the left or to the right or maybe you want to use the top third or the lower third of your viewfinder you know so uh this camera Really, I think, obviously, they did it on purpose because they're trying to keep the price low, but they also did not want to compete with the 5D Mark IV. So, that's obviously why they did that. Um, the ISO, the ISO, 100 to 40,000, so not too shabby. Um, I shot it up around 800 to 1,000 ISO. I didn't go really high with it. Um, I suspect it would do fine around 3,200. Would probably be okay with it. Um, it's a full frame sensor after all. Uh, one thing I found very odd with this camera is a sync speed of only 1 80th of a second. I mean, 1 1, one 80th of a second. I found that odd because you typically... For a, for a mid-size, mid-range camera, I would expect that to be at least 1,250. Um, where does that hurt you? Well, here's a, here's a scenario. I was out photographing uh, hummingbirds, and you don't want ambient light in your photograph at all, right? Uh, when you're doing a flash, when you're doing a, a full flash setup. Well, at 1 one one eightieth of a second, you're letting more ambient light into your exposure. You're dragging that shutter a little bit. And you might see some, you know, depending on the scenario, depending on the lighting, you might see some wing blur uh, caused by ghosting. So what else can I talk about? <coughs> we got a Digic 7 processor. Um, a single Digic 7 processor. 
We've got a single card slot, SD card slot. So a lot of people get hung up with a single with a single card slot. Okay. One SD card. I get that. Okay, it's better to have two than have one. It's not the end of the world though. Now, again, if I were a wedding photographer, I might be a little concerned. If I was somebody that was going on a once-in-a-lifetime uh, photo adventure, I might be a little concerned that I couldn't make duplicates while I was shooting. But the bottom line is, guys, you know, these cameras have never been better as far as uh, how their buses work, how they write to the cards. So you're not going to have a lot of issues, I don't think, there. It's, it's one of these things where it's... I think people think... Come on, Canon, why not, right? Why not two card slots? Well, again, that goes back to they don't want to compete with their more expensive lines. Why would they put features into lower-end cameras uh, and drag business away from themselves? That's not going to happen. Okay. We got our LPE6N battery, which is nice because that's compatible with my 7D Mark II as well as the new Canon R, EOS R. Um, had no problem setting up back button focus on it. I'm a big proponent of back button focus. Uh, other than that, I really, you know, everything else is pretty much, I'll let you see the menu system on it. You know, there's the menu system, it's touch screen. Um, so that works well as, as well. Um, give me a second here. Okay. So, you know, all in all, um, I think it's a great camera. Again, I'm considering it for, for what I'm going to do in the, in the wild wildlife. I think it'd be a great backup camera. I think it'd be great for that landscape work. The, the things that my 7D Mark II can't do very well. And one of those is landscapes. Let's be honest, APS-C cameras are not the best for landscape. Okay, I mean, these are, by, by and large, would blow a landscape camera away. Um, <clears throat> I mean, blow a uh, APS-C camera away. <clears throat> but really, what can I say? I mean... I really can't add anything else to it. Let me look at my notes here real quick, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, uh, one thing about this camera, if you're in wildlife, this may be, depending on what you're doing, could be a deal breaker. For me, it's not, generally. Um, it only had, it tops out at one four thousandth of a second shutter speed instead of one eight thousandth. Now, where that could come in is if you are doing... Um, birds in flight like songbirds in flight and you're using ambient light that could be an issue because you really need one four thousandths to one eight thousandths of a second to freeze those wings on fast songbirds so that could be an issue for you but i think by and large it's not going to be i think most people are going to do fine with it i did want to show you the very angle display which is very cool and again, touch screen. So I think all cameras should have that. I'm sorry, Canon, but everything should be very angle by now. I, I don't understand why they're not, but I'll get off my soapbox on that. Anyway, that's all I had on the initial summary review. Stay tuned. We're going to go spec by spec. And I'm going to show you exactly what I think of each of the specifications, how it fits. And then we're going to look at the photographs that I made with this camera and how I think it compares to other cameras in this line. It, this, let's go down through the specifications real quick. The, it has an all new 26.2 megapixel full frame sensor, uh, 45 cross type AF points. They're all cross-type depending on the lens you use. Uh, if you look at the Canon literature, they only guarantee that 
uh, with certain Canon lenses. Uh, so I'm not saying that it won't work with third party. It's just that Canon will not openly openly say that it works with that with third party lenses. Uh, it has a single digit seven processor, so you're not going to have as much processing speed for autofocus and so forth. It has 6.5 frames per second continuous shooting for 21 raw exposures in the buffer. Now, a little bit on that real quick. Six and a half frames per second is not bad. The, the 5D Mark III, for example, was six frames. And there were people using that to shoot wildlife, various types of uh, even bird photography and so forth. So six and a half frames per second is almost to that entry level sweet spot, which I think is eight frames per second. So they're heading in the right direction here. It is uh, a small buffer at only 21 raw exposure, so about three seconds, roughly, two to three seconds of, of full-on, you know, holding the shutter button down. We'll hear what that sounds like in a minute here. Um, the Mac shutter speed, 1 4,000. Has no 4K video. Uh, 1080p video up to 60p. 4K time-lapse movie, so you can make a uh, time-lapse with it at 4K. Uh, autofocus is available at f8 with modern Canon glass. Again, not a guarantee on the third-party lenses. Uh, Wi-Fi is built in. GPS is built in. NFC is built in. And we have ISO from 100 to 25,600. Expandable to 102,400. It does have anti-flicker technology. It has a touch screen, um, single SD card slot, dual pixel AF live video recording, and it was released in June of 2017. Okay, so let's go back over a couple of these specifications that I think are important to, uh, particularly to, you know, wildlife and so forth. Okay, so before I go into the specifications, Let's talk about um, how the camera generally handles. It's, like I said, it's about the size of the ADD uh, APS-C camera. It's smaller than my 7D Mark II. It has roughly the same feel. It's got that uh, typical Canon-esque grip on the side, on the right side. The shutter release is very, very similar to all other Canon cameras does not have a built-in flash so if you're expecting that you're gonna be out of luck uh, by the way that was a I, I don't know why they don't have a built-in flash on this model camera uh, there's a couple of good reasons I can think of uh, the first reason would be uh, that acts as a or can act as a master uh, flash in your master slave uh, multi-flash setup and so I noticed that right away with this camera uh, because I was doing a multi-flash uh, hummingbird shoot so that's kind of a, a disappointment and I don't really see why in a you know semi-consumer camera I don't see why they wouldn't have it you, know, you think about you know just having that available when you're at a birthday party or Christmas time to be able to just have a flash when you forget yours or just just for taking snapshots and things like that. So not really understanding that with Canon. There, It's almost like Canon is trying to position the, the 6D Mark II as a, as a kind of a semi-pro camera. And I, uh, okay, I, I kind of get that. It's, it's got a lot of pro features, but I think build wise and so forth, it's, it's really more of a, I guess advanced amateur type of camera, maybe even maybe even consumer esque in some in some ways. So that was kind of a disappointment to me. Uh, anyway, the button, how the buttons are in this camera are, is very similar to my 7D Mark II. The biggest thing I saw that was different was, or two things actually. One was the Q button is actually located down if you're holding the camera uh, right kind of where your thumb goes on the back of the camera 
and it, it's a kind of flush. It's not. It doesn't stick up like a regular the regular Q button does. Uh, I'm not crazy about that. I did get used to it. It didn't bother me. Uh, the other the other thing that that I noticed, and I hate this about a lot of the Canon lower end cameras, and that is that it has a dial like a a a, a disc, if you will, arrow arrow keys on it. That how you that's how you move around like your autofocus points and so forth. Why it's not a joystick, I don't know. My only conclusion is that because Canon has targeted a specific, you know, kind of advanced amateur, amateurish group that they thought that they don't need to put it in that camera. Uh, I think it should be in every camera. I don't think it should be a feature. I mean, I don't think it should be a uh, um, a feature anymore. It should just be standard. So, not really happy about that. Other than that, I mean, the camera feels great. Uh, it, the one thing that was kind of interesting too is it has. Typically, you open up the the side of the camera with with a rubber uh, doorway that has on the side of it, and underneath that is usually things like your uh, HDMI out, your your port for remote shooting. Uh, cable release plug and that was actually that cable release port was actually on the front of the camera on this model which I thought was different uh, of course the fact that it only takes one SD card is man, we're kind of getting back in the specifications now but it, it, it is part of ergo, the ergonomics of it the one SD card in today's world I, I, I just why not make it two uh, why not have two there? It, it makes more sense with all the with all the other features that it has. You know why not do that? It's not a deal breaker, but you know why not? Uh, as far as everything else goes on, I think it's fine. I think it's what you would expect on a ca on a camera in this target audience that this camera is for. Can't really complain uh, other than that. So. Looking back at the specifications, the, the things that stick out to me here, the things as a, that a nature photographer or wildlife photographer would be interested in, is first of all, you have the 26 megapixel sensor. Now, you may have read and heard a lot about this sensor. This sensor uh, is an all new sensor. And one of the big complaints that people have is that it does not have the dynamic range of the previous model it's actually gone backward and that really surprised people and a lot of people were kind of mad at, at Canon for doing that I would in my experience with it I would say that they are probably right the the dynamic range wasn't that great but it wasn't horrible either I was able to recover shadows fairly well I was able to uh, bring back my highlights fairly well um, Better than an APS-C, but maybe not as good as, say, a 5D Mark IV. So, you know, take that as it is or take it as you want. It's it's not gonna it's not going to stop you from being a good photographer. It's not going to stop you from making good shots. It's just that if you like that crutch of being able to go in and just kill all of the uh, dynamic range... I mean, I mean, kill all the highlights till they're nothing, then you're not going to be able to do that. But I will say that if you love dynamic range, go back and pick yourself up an old 1D Mark II or 1D Mark III. Those things have, you can pretty much have all the dynamic range you want. But, of course, it's only 10 megapixels. So that's been a big argument. I personally thought the sensor looked great. And we're going to see that in a little bit. I thought the the sharpness was good. Um, I was able to shoot. Uh, I sh I didn't shoot really high ISO. I shot at around 800, um, and, and everything looked great. I didn't really have any noise to speak of. Um, just worked fine. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the the AF points. 45 cross type. Okay, at first you're thinking, okay, that's awesome. You know, I have 45 autofocus points. Well, 
yes and no because it looks like what they did honestly I, maybe they didn't but it looks like what they did was they took the exact autofocus sensor out of the APS-C camera and uh, ADD and dropped it into the 60 Mark II and I've heard people other people say that and I I almost well I guess I'm kind of willing to agree with them at this point um, and what that does, unfortunately, because because the ADD is an APS-C sensor, it makes the 60 Mark II uh, only cover the middle part. The, the sensors only cover or the AF points only cover the center of the screen. So what happens if you've got a subject on the far right of the, of the screen? Well, you can't focus on them anymore. You know, so that could be a problem that could be a deal breaker for you you know if you do a lot of uh sports which i which i use this camera for i was doing my son's soccer game and the one thing i couldn't do is if i went vertical i couldn't put the vertical uh autofocus point on on his eye it ha i had to had to be down on his uh his chest so that might be a deal breaker for you I, I really wish they'd spread those out a little bit more, but I truly think all they did was take the ADD sensor and drop it in. I truly think that's what they did. Um, and that's that's kind of sad, actually. The Digic 7 processor. Not much news there. It's a step up. You should get more um, processing power with that as far as autofocus speed. Um writing the cards and so forth it's just more computing power problem is there's only one of them and that could be an issue with autofocus i don't know that for sure just throwing that out there we talked about the 6.5 frames per second what else for the the you know the wildlife photographer here uh iso 100 to 25,600. that uh is, is typical i mean Nothing really to see there. I think I think it's fine up in the everything I've heard and read. It's fine. I did not get a chance to test it, but the higher ISOs are good with this. Um, some say the original 6D was better on the higher ISOs. I don't know that for sure. Um, I have seen and worked with the 6D in the past, but um, can't say for sure whether I didn't do a direct comparison. Um, you know, a lot of people love GPS and Wi-Fi and all that. And, and although it, this camera has all that, it doesn't do a whole lot for me. I've, I've, I've used it on my 7D Mark II with the, with the, uh, SD radio, that card that it has. Uh, I, I've used the GPS in my 7D Mark II. It's nice to be able to see exactly where you took a photograph, but it's not absolutely essential. It will run your battery down more. It takes the Canon LP E6N battery, and that that's good. I really like that they're, I really like that they're standardizing their batteries. Um, that will fit the 7D Mark II. It will fit the 5D III. Uh, actually, I don't. I think you still have to use the the E6 in the in the 5D, but the E6 will fit this. The E6N, I don't think it's backward compatible to the 7D Mark or to the uh, to the 7D or the 5D3, but you can use uh, the E6N in in this camera. So let's go ahead and and look at the photographs I've got out here. Go ahead and click on the link in the show notes. That'll take you out to my Flickr page. And what I've got here, I've got a couple of images. One, the first one here is uh, the hummingbird shot. Now, if you remember, we I talked about that I didn't couldn't use the the pop up flash as my master flash or commander flash. I think uh, Nikon uh, calls it. I couldn't use that here, so I let my background go black and they're dark on this one. Um, but one thing that you that maybe you can't see it here, but I I think you can is the amazing amount of detail in in this image uh you can see every feather every um 
every little detail around the eyes, uh, every little detail on the talons, the flowers are, you know, I can see every little hair on the flowers, very, very good detail there. Um, so not a whole lot to say there. I did compare it to, to my 7D Mark II, and they're very comparable, actually, as long as you're at ISO 100, uh, both those, both the image quality in this and that is comparable. I think the 60 Mark II wins in the image quality category, but it is a full frame sensor, so I would kind of expect that. This shot was a uh, shot of my EF 300 millimeter F4L, F14, 1 160th of a second at ISO 160. Now, also, you should note that the Canon 6D Mark II has a flat maximum flash sync of 1 1 80th of a second. Now, I think that's a bit low myself. I would definitely like to see them bring that up to uh, 1 200th or 1 250th. Um, I just thought 1 1 80th is awful low for a, for a modern uh, camera. And why is that important? Let me talk about that real quick. It's this is the perfect subject to talk about it with the the uh, ruby throated hummingbird here. Okay, what ends up happening is if you only have one one eightieth, you're dragging your shutter a little bit. What they call dragging your shutter, and what happens is you get too much ambient light in your photograph, and that will make ghosting when your flashes go off. That will make ghosting, and what that is is. The ambient exposure, you're seeing like a little bit. You can see it here a little bit, actually, what happened. Uh, a little bit of that back wing, you can see where it is ghosted slightly against the background because there was some ambient light coming in here. And that may very well be to not be not having that 1 3 20th sync speed or 1 2 50th sync speed. So it is important that, you know, a lot of people... They overlook things like that, little things, and it can be very important depending on what type of shoot that you're doing. Uh, the next image I had was just one I took of my son Jacob uh, playing uh, soccer, and I took a lot more, but I didn't want to put them out here because, uh, you know, privacy issues and so forth with children, so I just put one out here. Um this right here is was very typical representation of that day. Uh, I thought that it did very well. I thought the 60 Mark II had very good autofocus. Um, at times, I felt like it did better than my 7D Mark II, and that, that's a pretty big statement. But I really liked the autofocus system. Um, I was extremely happy with it. And if you want a camera that can handle sports really well, um, but yet gives you that all around, you know, generalist type of camera. This is really a camera for you. If you, if you're looking for something that I can take it with me, you know, when I go do landscapes, I can take it with me when I go to my kids, uh, baseball game. Um, I can shoot family portraits with it. Um, I can, I can do vlogging with this camera. That's another thing. This camera is very good for vlogging because it has that fully articulated uh, LCD. But a lot of, I've heard some people say the autofocus isn't that good, and I, I don't know where they got that from. I had absolutely no problem whatsoever focusing this. I was using my uh, 150 to 600 millimeter here, and um, I was very, very happy. Um, so that's pretty much all I had on the review uh, let me see if I can think of anything else. Uh, there's another shot here of, I'm going to go ahead and put that out there as well. There's another shot here of, uh, the, the fire department here. They were messing around spraying the kids with, uh, with water. And I just got a shot of the fireman here and you kind of can see how it looks, uh, how the color particularly looks. It's got a very, I think a very good color palette going on here and, and that's typical of canon they're known for really good color representation um but other than that i mean it just it just seemed to work so kind of in conclusion you know who is this camera really for uh does it fit into into what we're doing here i think one 
the generalist will love this camera. If you are somebody that just does a lot of different things, I mean, you, you're you're doing everything from portraiture to um, sports to wildlife. You know, this is a great camera for you. Okay, it does all of that. Would I use this camera for my main wildlife camera? And I think the answer to that is no, I would not. However, I think this would be an excellent backup camera. I think it would be a good camera for doing what we did here, which was hummingbird photography, uh, setup photography, backyard birds. Um, I don't know if I would try to tackle photographing like swifts, like chimney swifts or um, something really fast, like a really fast bird like peregrine falcon or something like that. I don't know if I would try that per se, but I think for for shooting um, slow moving birds like egrets, I think it'd be fine. I, I mean, I was really, like I said, I was really surprised at what this camera could do. And I think it's, I think it's a sleeper. I really do. I think, um, I think people have given it a really hard, um, just been really hard on it. I just, uh, it, I don't think it really deserves the bad press. Um, you know, Casey Neistat actually did a, um, a little video on it and he's, he really, really liked it. And actually he switched to this camera, uh, for doing his vlogs. So that says something right there about what it can do. Now it's not 4k, but you know, big deal, right? Do you need 4k for vlogging right now? Not really. Okay. Uh, have you ever uploaded a 4k video to YouTube? It takes a ridiculous amount of time and then YouTube has to go and render all that. And it takes them sometimes up to a day to render that 4k video out. So, um, I, like I said, it, it, the only, the other thing I forgot to mention, I think it's really worth mentioning here is that this thing has a touchscreen LCD and that thing is amazing. You can just like on a cell phone, you can tap the screen and it'll focus where you tap. So, you know, if you're doing a video shot and you want to do pull focus, it's very easy to just tap, you know, from one uh, subject to another. And it just, it just does it without any kind of, um, you know, you, with my 7D Mark II, if I, if I want to do a pull focus shot, I have to actually put my hand on the camera itself. And what that does, of course, is immediately the camera shakes. So with this touch screen, just barely touch the screen and you can get that, that nice smooth transition. So I was pleasantly surprised and I, you know, maybe down, maybe a few years down the road, you might see this wind up as a, as a backup camera for me someday. I don't know. I mean, I, I would have no problem with this uh, being in my camera bag. And th this is one of these things where I think you need to be careful about who you're listening to and what kind of information they're telling you because no, it's not as good as a 1DX, right? Well, a 1DX costs, you know, $5,000. You know, this is a, a $1,200 camera, brand new. Used market, you're probably going to see it under $1,000 uh, pretty soon, if not already. And um, again, you know, just a, a good buy. Um, I recommend it. I really do. Aside from those few caveats that I found, a very good camera. I think particularly if you're interested in something that will do very well in the macro and landscape, I think you're going to be very happy with this. Um, now understand that the, the reality of it is, is that, you know, say if you want to compare a camera to this, let's say you're, you're looking for a camera and you're like, okay, what, what's comparable? The 60 Mark II and the, Canon 5D Mark III on the used market uh, has most of the features that this does. It doesn't have the articulating screen. It has a, a more autofocus points, so it'd be better at, at birds in flight. Uh, the, the 5D III has six frames per second versus six and a half here. So you pick up a half a frame with this. Image quality wise, they're about the same. Uh, the difference between 22 megapixels on the 5D3 
and 26 megapixels on here is very little just the outside border of your of your uh of your photograph so that's something to think about but if you're just looking if you want if you want a new camera and you're looking for something for a backup or you just want a full frame camera again highly recommend this okay don't forget to uh, check out my patreon site i've got uh packages out there starting at a dollar a month and help support the the channel the youtube channel the 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 podcasting the uh the blog posts by the way i have a companion blog to this i'll put that in the show notes and um you know go ahead and check out uh my instagram account at, at matt Cuda. and I've, I've got a new i just set up a new bird photography sharing group on facebook it's called usa uh, bird photography photo sharing group and um you can go out there and and just request to join and i'll i'll just click on the, the invite and let you join um it, it's good because there's not a lot of rules you know you can you don't have to put where you took it and all you know you there's not rules against taking photographs of nesting birds and stuff like that so uh, just uh, drop me a line and and I'll I'll set you up out there. Anyway, thanks for listening. Make it a great day and get out there and enjoy nature. Bye bye.